there are two ways that you can use an iPad with DaVinci Resolve. The first is as an external monitor, and the other is the app itself. I've been working in DaVinci Resolve for about 10 years now, and the idea of using an iPad with it was not very appealing to me. When the app first came out, I had no intention of using it. But in the last year, I've used the iPad in both scenarios, and I found them both to be very helpful. So I'm gonna share that with you. First, let's talk about using it as an external monitor. The first thing you wanna do is download the DaVinci Monitor app to get the two to talk to each other. Open up the DaVinci Monitor app. Go into your desktop at the very top where you have File, Edit, Timeline. Click on Workspace. And from Workspace, you're going to select Remote Monitoring. That's gonna open up another pop-up window called Remote Monitor Session. And then you're gonna select Start Session. Once that registers, which it only takes a few seconds, you'll get a very long passcode to enter. If you're on a Mac, you can just copy from here and paste it into your uh, iPad or iPhone. I'm now monitoring what's on this screen through the iPad right here. Where is this useful? If you want to expand your timeline, expand your node tree, and just have another monitor to look at. Where it's especially helpful is if you're doing uh, HDR or HLG content. For example, this monitor is not an HDR monitor. If I'm doing HLG content from the Osmo Pocket 3 or any type of HDR uh, project, the iPad and the iPhone will display properly what the HDR or HLG content is going to look like. So that's where it's most helpful for me. I especially like to use this when I'm on my laptop. Having that extra monitor is very helpful in that case. And even if I don't have my iPad with me, I can always use the phone. Now let's take a look at the app for the iPad. There's a couple of things to consider when you're going to be using DaVinci Resolve for iPad. If you have a mouse, external mouse that you can use or keyboard, that's gonna be helpful, especially the mouse. If you don't have a mouse, I would definitely recommend using the Apple Pencil. It's just gonna give you a little bit more of a fine-tuned control on the app itself. So when you open up the iPad app, you're gonna see a lot of familiarity if you're used to working in DaVinci Resolve. At the bottom right, you have the home button, which is where your projects live, and the gear icon, which is the project settings. So we first go into the home icon, and that's where you can start a new project. The next thing you're gonna notice is you don't have all the options up at the top, like you have like file, edit, workspace, timeline. You also don't have a media tab. So in order to import media, what you wanna do is on the app itself, at the upper left-hand side, you'll see a button that says media. Underneath that, the second icon in, which should look like a square with a down arrow. If you long press that, you'll get three options. Import media, import folder, and import from folders. Now this is HLG footage, so if it looks a little too bright, it's because this video is not HDR. You're also gonna notice we only have two pages in here, and that's the cut and the color page. Now there is a hack where you can open up the fusion and uh, audio tabs, but according to Blackmagic Design, those functions are not fully functional. I'm sticking to just using the cut and the color page. If you're accustomed to working in the cut page, this is gonna be the same. If you're like me, who primarily works in the edit page, it's a little bit of a learning curve. That thin blue line at the top is your entire project. Whether your project is 20 seconds long or 20 minutes and 20 seconds long. That's gonna represent the full scope of the project, the full length of the project. You'll see the scissors icon, which is where you make cuts. And you'll also see the media drop-ins, whether it's appended in, insert in the middle, those are all the same. Let's say you want to separate your audio and video to the left of the lock icon. You see two arrows pointing up and down. Pressing on that will separate your audio and your video track. That way, if you wanna cut audio and not video, you now have the two separate tracks. You also have the inspector, which gives you the same functions for audio, such as volume, panning, noise reduction, voice isolation, and same with video, as far as your zoom, your crop, and your stabilization. All those functions are still there under the inspector. In the upper left-hand side, you notice that you have your media, your transitions, your titles, and your effects. Those are very similar to the desktop version. What I typically do is with the pencil, just hold on one, drag it into the timeline, now let's take a look at the color page. The color page looks very similar to the desktop version. This is especially where having an external mouse or the pencil is going to be very helpful. Because as you see with 
any of the controls, whether it's adjusting your saturation, adjusting any of the color wheels, whether you're in the vector scope or waveform, adjusting curves, it's just going to be a lot easier to pinpoint and use those controls with the external mouse or the pencil because your other option is just to use your finger and that can become a little frustrating. If you're going to be doing HDR or HLG content, let's say from one of the DJI products like the Pocket 3, a drone, a GoPro, um, what you would do is in the gear icon for the under project settings, go to color management and your color science is going to be DaVinci YRGB. Your timeline color space is going to be Rec 2100 and your output color space is going to be Rec 2100 HLG. The cool thing is on the iPad, you can process HLG content in the free version. From what I've been told, and you know, keep in mind I have the studio version, but other people have told me they were not able to work in an HLG color space on the free version of the desktop studio. So if you're looking to do that HDR content, HLG content for free, you can do it on the iPad. In order to export your footage, you're going to select export, which is at the upper right hand side. You'll notice a pop-up box that says quick export. That's where you're going to select if you want it to be H.264, H.265 for, uh, you know, HDR, ProRes, or you can export directly to YouTube or TikTok on this version, which is helpful if that's what you're trying to do. Something to consider with the Resolve for iPad is if you have the desktop studio version, that does not equate to having the paid version or studio version on the iPad. Those are two different licenses. For the amount of work that I do on this with the iPad, I, I've never had an instance where it asked me, you know, or it didn't allow me to use a feature because it was a paid version. For me, it's all about the practicality, uh, what these tools offer. You know, even up until two years ago, I had zero interest in using the iPad with DaVinci Resolve. When I was looking to do HLG content and I realized the external monitor was going to allow me to do that, I also realized that, yes, I'm happy with the size of the screen, but if I ever needed to bring in another monitor just to check the color grade on something or you know, just to, it's just a good option to have. And also to be able to monitor that HLG, HDR content, that's where I started using that. It's just a lot easier if you already have it in your phone and you want to process something in HDR, you can do it right through there. It takes a little while to get used to it, at least for me, because I'm so used to using the desktop version. But it's a, it's a small learning curve. It's, it's easy and it's fun and it's free unless you pay for it. If you're interested in knowing more about processing HLG content for the Pocket 3 and for drones, I have this video that is brief and to the point and will help you. There's a lot more that you can do with the iPad version of Resolve, but this, these are the basics and this is how I use it. I'm curious to know how you use it and especially with either using it as an external monitor or for the editing app itself. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching everybody. Take care.